Welcome to chapter 3 of tutorial 5 for creating permit applications. In the previous chapters we covered the requirements for filling in a site on the SARS before you create your case and now we'll complete the tutorial with the actual case or the permit application. I've moved to create case application and this brought up the screen here and I will choose the Heritage Authority to whom I'm submitting the, um, or to which I'm submitting the uh, permit application. So let's pick SARA as our example. The case type will simply be permits. Of course you can have multiple case types. This particular case might involve a development as well, but let's just keep this simple for a permit application uh, for a building older than 60 years. Development type doesn't apply because it's a permit and then yes for the terms and conditions. On the right hand side we've added a new application checklist which will hyperlink off to a section of our FAQ section and you can read on more instructions related to filling in cases and permits on, via following this link and it's basically a written out uh, guide to filling out the cases. Let's move on to the case header Let's fill in the building that we would like to change. Um, the example I used in the previous chapters was a test site. I'm going to try and alter the building we're in at Sara, which is 111 Harrington Street. And the modification will be the roof. So it would be proposed, or let's, let's say alterations to roof of 111 Harrington Street, Cape Town. And the proposal description would be typically proposed um, change of roof tiles, something more descriptive, more detailed uh, related to your uh, permit application. The applicant would be you if you're the owner or you might be acting on behalf of the owner so various architects often take this role um, the it can be either if you aren't the owner you will have to upload a consent letter written and signed scanned letter from the owner but if you are the owner then simply fill in your name here and you will not have to fill in a consent letter if that's the case so for this tutorial we'll just choose John Demo as the applicant. Remember to allow the auto search to kick in and pick the person from the profile list. That will give you the node ID and if you don't find the name that you're looking for you can create them and if it is you as the user or the applic applicant as the owner uh, for this permit application please make sure you've gone back to my account and filled in the create a profile link um, that will fill in your profile information and make your name available in the applicant field. Consultants experts, just as in development cases, this is typically a person or persons who will conduct a heritage impact assessment of some nature uh, for the application in hand. If you're an architect, this might be you. And this will then trigger the application onto your My Projects list under your dashboard. I'm going to ignore this field for now. It's a simple case where the owner is the applicant for the alterations to the building. And the heritage reports, again, if a heritage app impact assessment has been requested, then it will be uploaded and filled in over here. Under Inventory Links, this is the big difference between a case for development under Section 38 of the National Heritage Resources Act and a permit application for identified heritage resources that are generally protected or formally protected such as the Section 27 and 29 sites in terms of the NHRA. So to find your site you can either type the site reference in here. We'll ignore objects for now if you're filling in a permit application for export of an object, um, an old painting for instance, then you would fill in the object code here. But I'm going to pick a building, so I'm going to click on search and I will fill in the site 
name and a full site name I'll use the street so Harrington and you'll notice the operator is set to contains let's apply that and this is the building we're in 111 Harrington Street there it is you simply click on the link and it will fill in the site code in the link to field then from that point you can move on across to attach docs and here we can upload some images related to the application so that might be the type of tile that I'd like to use for the roof or um, it might be a concept plan um, various images would be appropriate here then under additional documents you would upload any motivations additional information w which would Im amplify your permit application might provide additional explanations for the activity you are requesting permission for and then under consent letters if you aren't the owner then you need to get a signed letter from the owner scan it and upload it to consent letters that is pretty much it for a permit application the other refs and location info don't apply for permit applications because the mapping is embedded in the site itself so you can find the permit applications uh, under a different menu option under maps in a second other refs are uh, used for development projects where the Department of Environmental Affairs or mining are involved <coughs> and you would hardly ever use this for permit applications unless there was a a violation or a rectification issue involved where you might be ref referring to a court uh, court case under the other references but the generally for permit applications you won't use other refs or location info hit save at the bottom and that will give you the unique case ID which you can then use as your reference point for future correspondence with the Heritage Authority the case then goes into the unassigned cases and it will be assigned by a case officer and they may contact you for, for more information via the messaging system um, before they process the rest of your permit application to identify or find the permit application for commenting purposes you would use the permit applications map it's a sublink of the maps menu and instead of the development cases which were demonstrated in a previous tutorial you can see these black markers indicate the current permit applications I'm going to zoom into Cape Town because 111 Harrington Street is down here and this is probably the one we're interested in there we go and this allows not only applicants uh, other developers members of the public and registered conservation bodies to find applications occurring in their area so similarly to ca development cases which are mapped as poly polygons people can find cases by the status of the case um, the the area the um, applications are taking place in uh, via this mapping system which makes it easy for people to uh, locate uh, applications w where it requires comments in terms of section 10 of the act after you've completed the application let's look at the dashboard and because I use John Demo as the name of the applicant this does not appear under my dashboard because this is the demo applicant account and to find it I would go to my content because I'm the author of the permit application I'm not actually listed in the applicant or the consultant fields and there's my application if you were the owner and the author and you had entered your name under applicant you would simply find the case under my applications on the dashboard that's all there is to a permit thanks for listening to this tutorial